this thing on. All right. Good morning. If we could all kind of get settled so we can get started this morning. I'm Rob Gourlay. I am a sixth grade teacher here at Indian Creek. Lee was a close personal friend of mine, but I'm also the lay leader at Allen Memorial United Methodist Church. And on, that, on behalf of both of them, I want to welcome you to the celebration of, of life of Lee Autry. He was a special man to both places and to many people, and I believe this crowd is a testament to that. At this time, I'd like to invite Reverend Beverly Castevens to come forward for her invocation. Let us pray. God of us all, we thank you for the grace that you have given us. And though through which we pray to you in this dark hour, a life we love has been torn from us. Expectations the years once held have vanished. The mystery of death has stricken us. And you, oh God, you know the lives we live and the deaths we die. And you have woven us so into your purpose. You have given us reason and rationality and strength even in the midst of frailty, happiness in the midst of pain. And so we get asked this day that you give us faith to believe that every good that seems to be overcome by evil and every love that seems to be buried in death shall rise again to eternal life. And that every life so well lived does not die but is born forth in the lives of those that Lee touched. We ask your blessings upon the students and the faculty and staff of this school that he loved so much, all of his players, and all of those who have known him. We ask that we be comforted in our grief and encouraged by your promise through a God who reigns and lives with us forever and ever and we can all say with great certainty, Amen. Amen. Hebrew scriptures offer us words of promise. The prophet Isaiah, who had to speak hard truths to the people, was also able to lift up to them words of comfort because God does not leave us orphaned. God is always with us. Hear these words from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall want and walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. To the family, Lee and I go back. We went to high school together. We played in the band together. So we'd often share those memories and those stories. 
when I heard about it, I was just floored. It hit me hard. But God gave me this song. He put this song in my spirit, and I shared it with some of my colleagues before, and I want to share it with all of you. If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song if I can show somebody they are traveling wrong then my living shall not be in vain my living Be in vain, oh, my living, it shall not, it won't be in vain, if I can help just one person, just one person, somebody, as I travel along then my living it shall not be in vain amazing grace if you know what sing it with me how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was I don't think it's fair that I get to follow that. Thank you, Cheryl, <laughs> very much. Um, I can't think of much to speak to who Lee was than that statement, if I can help just one somebody. And he didn't care if that one somebody showed up in ISS or trying out for wrestling or on the football field are in the aisle at Walmart, are wandered through the doors of Allen Memorial United Methodist Church. When he saw that person, wherever he saw that person, his thought was, if I can help this one somebody. I'm Max Vincent. I was privileged to be Lee's pastor for four years, and I've been his friend a lot lot longer and I was as shocked as any when I heard what had happened there's some words I think Lee would want you to hear today and I want to share them from the Gospel of John the 14th chapter Jesus is speaking to his disciples before he left them and he said do not let your hearts be troubled Neither let them be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, 
there you may be also. Thank you to Indian Creek for letting us gather here today so that we can be with one another as we give thanks for this life and acknowledge our grief. I think some other words Lee would want you to hear today are go dogs, <laughs> go panthers, love one another as God has loved you. In thinking about Lee over the last couple of days, the words of another prophet came to mind. Lee's not a person we would often think of with the prophets of old. We usually think of them as fiery, uh, almost radical characters, but the words of one of the Hebrew prophets came to me. What does God require of us? To do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. That's what Lee did as he tried to help everybody. When we hear the word justice, we often think of those who may be out marching for justice and carrying signs, and there is a time and a place for that, but Lee did justice. He did justice in the way he treated us all as we were equal and worthy of his love and respect. The tributes that have filled his Facebook page and in his obituary notice manifest how he reached out to people across the board. And once you came into the orbit of his love, he didn't forget you. He followed students from Indian Creek to high school and to college. He followed players from here to high school and to college. Even if they didn't have the sense to go to Georgia, he would still follow them because he loved them. He loved mercy. One of his former students who wandered into ISS one day told the story that on leaving, Lee made the wry comment, I don't want to see you again in here but he followed that student. And whenever he encountered him at a high school football game, he would ask not only how the student was doing, but how his sisters were doing and how his mother was doing and what his thoughts were after high school. He loved mercy. And I can't think of a better man as a picture of walking humbly with God. If Lee was around you long enough, he would love to introduce you to one of his true loves in life, Allen Memorial United Methodist Church, a place where he had felt that love and acceptance that God offers to us. And he wanted you to come and be a part of that. Rob's gonna share more about Lee later, but Rob attests to how just a simple invitation brought him into this orbit of Lee's inner world, his core beliefs and practice. That's where I really got to know Lee. One of my favorite memories of Lee, we were standing out uh, by the barbecue pit one <laughs> fall. <laughs> Rob and Lee were there at like 3.30. I showed up about 7. <clears throat> and we were in the process of, of turning the racks that had barbecue chicken on them and we got done, and uh, we were just standing there, nothing to do but wait for that side to cook. And Lee started telling some stories, and he told a story about an encounter he had with a student that week, and he told the student, all that we can do is our best, but we can only do our best if we do all that we can do. It took me a few minutes to realize he said that after I had dropped half a rack of chickens on the coals. <laughs> so I don't think that was really about the student so much about me, but it was his gentle way of teaching any and all of us to pay attention to the little details. 
And the little detail I think Lee would want you to be attentive to today is showing that love to one another. Share the stories. Tell of the way he has touched your life. Acknowledge our loss. But no, these words provide us all comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Believe in God. Believe God has accepted Lee into one of his homes. And Lee's gone there to make a place for all of us. He's gone sure to be, they, be sure they have cable and ESPN on Saturdays <laughs> every fall. And I look forward to joining him one day and all those who fill God's house of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 This morning is a great morning. Today is a great day. For today we celebrate the life of a son, a brother, a friend, a teacher, a mentor, and a coach. Today we celebrate the life of Lee Autry. Today we celebrate the life of a gentleman who was the truest definition of what it meant to be a Christian. I had the privilege of calling Lee not just my friend, but my brother. Lee put his church and this school above everything else. And he never hesitated in that. And this is a testament to the man that Lee was. Lee was known for his association with Indian Creek Middle School, the Oxford Lions Club, and Al Memorial United Methodist Church. Lee was a man that had a deep faith in his Lord and God. There are people in this world that say that they live by the teachings of Jesus. But Lee never left a doubt. We would often have conversations about our faith, and he would remind me that you have to go through the Old Testament to get to the New Testament. He loved unconditionally and without reservation. He would pay for students' lunches, clothing, and listen to them when they needed someone to talk to. Lee built relationships with his students. There are many here today to honor his memory because of those relationships, and I want to take a minute to acknowledge that. So if you are a student of Lee's, 
a football player of Lee's, a colleague of Lee's, I'd like for you to stand up. Take a minute to look around. This is what it truly means to leave an impact on the world around you. Thank you. Please be seated. I've had, I was one of the fortunate few that knew Lee outside of church and school. I spent many hours with him watching football games down in the basement checking out his train collection but the time we spent together that meant the most was at Allen Memorial United Methodist Church 17 years ago Lee invited my wife and I to church he'd been after us for a while to be perfectly honest with you Seventeen years have flown by. Two children were born into that church, but more importantly, we found a family. There were many weeks that Lee and I would spend seven days a week together. We're not going to talk about all those conversations, but they were well worth it. See, Lee came to love my family as his own. He loved my boys as if they were his own children. From the day they were born, literally, from the day they were born, they called him Uncle Lee. Even here at school. And let me tell you, he got a kick out of it too. He walked down the hallway with the biggest grin for the next five minutes just because my boys Say good morning, Uncle Lee. Many times, students would look at my boys and give them kind of a funny look. And occasionally, one would ask, why do you call him Uncle Lee? They did not hesitate. And they would say he was truly their uncle. One of the last pictures I have of Lee is on Father's Day this past year. Our church has a tradition. We hand out a bag of peanuts and a bottle of Coke to every man that is in the church. This year, instead of going up and down the aisles, they visited houses. Lee wasn't home. He was probably out looking for another train. So, after service, Brett, my oldest son, walks up to Lee with a big grin on his face and says, Happy Father's Day. And I got a picture of my son. Hugging his Uncle Lee. My boys were not alone in this. Lee encouraged all the students and athletes at Indian Creek Middle School. It was un not unusual to walk down the hall and see Lee talking to a student about a game, asking them how their grades were, and encouraging them to do their best. Over the last couple of weeks, I've heard and saw on social media stories about Lee showing up at graduation parties, special events, and athletic events. One story touched me. Lee went to the funeral of a grandmother of one of his ball players. The ball player did not realize that Lee was there until the end. The young man got out of line and gave Lee a giant hug. That was Lee. He was always there when you needed him, and as I have experienced losses in my life, Lee was the first one to check on me, offer me his support, and tell me he was there if I needed him. Lee hated to be the center of attention. 
I can go on and tell you he's not saying kind things about me right now. All this would embarrass him. He would sneak into the back of a performance, athletic event, or service. He wanted all the attention to be on his students and athletes. Two years ago, Sam was participating in his first band concert. Lee had talked, about it, talked to him for days about how nervous he was, but how he was looking forward to seeing this concert. And my son just could do this number because, well, he was really, really nervous. Lee had, had wrestling practice that evening, and as was his custom, he would go to wrestling practice and he would sneak in to the back corner of the gym to hear the band concert. He walked in and started smiling ear to ear, listening to the students play. He told me later that he thought it was the greatest concert he had ever heard. I think he lied because I think today was the greatest concert he ever heard. Thank you, Van. He then stayed and helped pick up chairs and bandstands because that's what Lee did. There are not many ISS teachers that get a steady stream of students walking up to them at a concert, but that, but that night and every night Lee did because the students truly loved Lee. The coach in Lee was probably the part that many of us are most familiar with. I can't tell you the number of years that I spent on that field right over there, only to hear Lee on this field right over here. Very, very clearly, by the way. One time sticks out to me. Lee's deep, booming voice on the football field always telling his players, this is the fifth time I told you to do this. Do it correctly. That was Lee. And then he would tell them how to fix it for the fifth time. Players would go into his office asking for a piece of equipment and uh, spending five minutes talking. They loved the discipline that he gave to his athletes, the repetitions that made the players go through the drills and plays until they got it perfect. He was the first coach that the wrestlers went to after they got off the mat. Lee was there with a helpful hint, a high five, and encouragement. Lee loved those that, co that he coached. He respected each of you and was grateful for your insight and knowledge that made him a better coach. Lee always said that there was no brotherhood like a coaching brotherhood. Thank you for the coaches that are here today. It truly means a lot. Lee was also an avid sports fan. He's definitely one of the few individuals that held season tickets to both Georgia and Georgia Tech. And he would tell you that too. But he was also a huge LSU fan. Something about his dad going to college there. I remember talking to Lee a couple of years ago leading up to the SEC championship game in which LSU was playing Georgia. I asked him what he was going to wear. He said, I'm going to wear my Georgia hat and my LSU, or my Georgia shirt and my LSU hat. I kind of looked at him. said, okay but I understood. He came back the, the Monday after and told me, he said, I got some crazy looks yesterday. I'm like, I bet you did. He said, they didn't understand how I could be an LSU fan and a Georgia fan at the same time. I told him, only you have a big enough heart to be a fan of both. 
and we both laughed. Now to talk about the chicken barbecue that Max referenced a few minutes ago. Al Memorial is known for its chicken barbecues. We do this fundraiser twice a year and many of us have the distinct privilege and pleasure of getting there at 3 o'clock in the morning in order to start the fires. Some others of us say something about beauty sleep and we're just going to leave that right where it is. But one of the things that Lee was known as was our unofficial pit master. He would sit at the end of the pit, we would lift the chickens, and Lee would look at us, and he would say, five more minutes. And it never failed, ever. Today, I want you to take a minute to think about what you would say to Lee if you had five more minutes. I know what I would say because they were the last words I, re I said to him, which were, I love you. In Lee's honor and memory, I ask, today you take those five minutes and call someone and tell them that you love them. One last thing before I ask the softball players and football players to come forward. Take a minute to read the Beatitudes. I don't know of any greater script, scripture passage that described Lee. Lee was a humble man. He served with a servant's heart and he loved with God's love. Thank you for being here today. Football players, softball players, if I could ask you guys to come line up right here in front of the, the stage. Thank you. Lee did not know that when he closed his eyes that one last night that he would open them not in this world but the next. And I would like to offer this last musical tribute. <clears throat> Abide with me fast falls the eventide The darkness deepens Lord with me Heaven's morning breaks 
and earth veins shadows flee in life in death O Lord abide with me In Lee's honor, the sporting complex that is this football field and that softball field is being renamed the Lee Autry Sports Complex. I'm Mark Destu. I'm the principal of the school. Uh, Lee and I were colleagues. This was this is our fourth year. And uh, uh, let me begin by saying that it is overwhelming to see how many people are here today. This is awesome. This is a true testament to who Lee Autry was as a human being. He was more than an educator. He was way more than an educator. Um, also, um, Miss Samantha Fury, our superintendent, could not be here today. She attended the services on Monday, um, and she sends her regards to everybody. She would be um, amazed as well as how many people are here. It's awesome. As we just revealed, the entire sports complex is going to be renamed the Lee Autry Athletic Complex, Sports Complex. Because he was way more than football. He was way more than wrestling. He was an institution here at Indian Creek. I will tell you that he, is, he had asked that no flowers be donated at his services. He had asked that, and the family had asked, that individuals donate to the football and wrestling programs as well as to one of the men's clubs at the church somebody in their heart of hearts has donated enough for us for us to get a brand new wrestling mat and the res light manufacturing company has offered to add the inscription in memory of Coach Lee Autry, right at the edge of the mat where the scorer's table is going to be. And we will hope to have that and an unveiling of that when it arrives, hopefully for wrestling season. We do have or will have a GoFan link set up for the school that will be dedicated specifically to raising funds on behalf of Coach Autry for the athletic programs here at Indian Creek. You'll notice, for those of you that haven't been back in a while, the press box is missing. On December 29, 2019, vandals pretty much destroyed the inside, and it was not salvageable, so we had to tear it down. We've been trying for a year and a half, almost two years now, to get it rebuilt. So, between the monies we raise from any donations to some of the work that we're going to do here, 
we hope to rebuild that bigger and better in honor of Lee. But with that, I just want to say on behalf of the school, on behalf of all of the staff members that are here, we thank you for coming to honor our friend. And we want you to remember him. I have evidence today that Lee was one of the wealthiest people I have ever known. It is measured not in money or property or anything else because all of that fades and crumbles and goes away. However, a legacy of people is the greatest wealth you could ever live, ever have, and ever hope for. Thank you for coming today and showing us how wealthy Lee was. And because Lee was a student of the Hebrew Scriptures, it is only appropriate that I give you the Levitical blessing, which was his favorite. Please rise as you were able. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace to love one another and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and the people of God said, Thank you for being here today and honoring Lee. Have a great Saturday. And as Lee would say, go dogs. <laughs> that was painful, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>